Hi, and welcome to the first interview of oh my Life Lessons Project. <laughs> Yay. I'm so happy it's you, Kara. Aw, thanks. Um, you're one of my favorite people on the planet to talk to, and uh, I'm just really excited for an excuse to sit with you for a few minutes and just yeah. listen to what you've learned in your life. I think of you as a super courageous, inspiring, wildly talented and interesting person. And so um, it's uh, just a real treat to get Thanks. To, like, yeah. swim around in that for a little bit. <laughs> I'm excited to figure out what I learned too. Um, I, isn't so. that the truth? That's, I think, why we like talking to each other so much is part of it is we learn from each other and we also learn from ourselves in these conversations. Yeah, yeah, reflect it back, you know. Um, yeah, so thanks for having me. Excited to kick it off. So tell me, like, just a little summary about who you are, what you do. Yeah, um, so I'm a, a writer, uh, basically in a lot of different forms. Uh, as a journalist, you know, I've written for magazines and websites and that sort of thing. Um, and I'm a playwright and a musical theater writer, uh, so I'm a lyricist as well. Uh, I write a daily newsletter called Brass Ring Daily uh, that encourages people to work on their own creative projects. Um, as I sh sort of share my progress with my own projects as well. Um, yeah, so basically I just say like anything with words, like that's, that's, my, that's my game, uh, that's my bag. And uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I make my way in the world. Wow. I, it's funny, as you were talking about like all these little things, it struck me that part of the reason creative people feel so courageous is because it's just not like an obvious, easy path. Not mm -hmm. that anybody's path is obvious or easy, but to be able to say like, I'm gonna create a bright light out of a hundred little points of light feels scarier to me than I'm gonna charge at the light. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like they're, they're all like definitely didn't happen overnight with all of them. So I think it's a little path like, okay, well now I'm going to pursue this. Now I'm gonna pursue that. Um, but then you're right, it all sort of adds up in the end. So like, you know, one of my favorite sayings is like a Steve Jobs quote that's like, you can always connect the dots looking backward, um, but you can't connect them looking forward. So, um, but I like that idea of thinking of them as, you know, little points of light uh, and sort of illuminating different parts of like your experience um, and how you can sort of share that with others. So uh, yeah, that's, that's the, the journey, right? <laughs> that we're all on trying to figure out all those little points of experience. It's, so to that, I know recently you were doing some work to start to start to think about how you describe your specific space in writing and mm -hmm. what it is Kara does uniquely. Where have you landed on that? That's a great question. I think, um, really good advice I got was to ask other people um, what, like, a simple, a simple question, like what are three words that you would use to describe me? Um, because, and we've talked about this so often, like our own perceptions of ourself might not match up with how other people see us or they can sort of illuminate different parts of ourself. And so I took that question and I asked, you know, I asked my, one of my brothers, I asked you, I asked a couple of other friends who know me from different parts of life too. So to sort of be like, oh, you, you know, we were really close maybe five years ago, you know me from, from journalism world or um, from playwriting world. And so to sort of see if there were any commonalities there. Um, and it was really helpful. I think a lot of people should, should try it too. Just, you know, text your friend and be like, hey, I'm trying out this experiment. And like, do you, what, what are three words you use to describe me? Um, so yeah, picking out some themes from that. Um, you know, I sort of saw that yeah, I really like to like encourage other people with their own creative work and share my own process. Um, still working on like the exact language of framing it, uh, which is something that I've come to you with uh, for help. But uh, I think it does help to even, you know, come up with some sort of tagline or headline or, you know, what I'm working on right now, but also knowing that you can change it at any point, you know, it's like a work in progress. I love that, not being precious about this stuff. So I think that is part of the fear, right? Is, mm -hmm. oh, I better not do it because I might not do it right. 
Right, right. Or, oh, this is my chance to like write my bio or something. And, and how am I going to describe myself? What nouns am I going to use? Am I even a writer? Am I even an editor? Like, but it's, it's, you know, it can change. Like there's a back button for a reason. There's a, there's a delete key. And I think, um, you know, my bio has changed drastically in the last like five years. And um, I'm sure yours has too, like as your priorities shift and, um, you know, different responsibilities come up. Um, but I think something that you've said too is like, what is a theme, you know, or what is like a purpose or intention? So going beyond like my job title, I think is, um, is always really important and something um, that I've learned in, you know, recent, recent years. Because how would you, you wouldn't describe if I said, you know, tell me about yourself, you might say, you know, a job title, or you might say like, I, you know, help create, uh, you know, connection and change and um, help people find those things, you know, like, how would you, how would you sort of describe yourself? Yeah. It's lost you like on an airplane or something. It's so true. I mean, honestly, like, it, there are days for all of us too, where we probably take the easy road out, which is mm -hmm. I wake up every morning and I do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can eat to work and then I am. <laughs> my parent two children. I walk into this company aiming to do this thing. But right. when you start to look at how you do all those things, it starts to tell more of the truth of right. the story. Yeah. And that's interesting. Yeah, the, the how. And right, because you can be consistent across many different like writing disciplines or many different responsibilities and the things you do after work too. And um yeah, there, there are words that, you know, that you can use to describe that too. And that's why I think just like asking people around you is always really, really helpful. I actually, I want to ask some more people too, just to sort of survey the, I don't know, survey the crowd. Me too. Like the other thing that's, that's sparking for me as you say this is this idea that like so much of what we do, if we really look at it, we're doing because it was kind of like the expected road. Mm -hmm. And it was like, well, you're supposed to figure out how to pay your bills. Right, right. And so I did this thing, or this thing happened, and I said yes. Mm -hmm. but I think there's the other things that are like, this thing wasn't happening, but I worked really hard to make it happen. Right. <laughs> and those things to me probably tell more of the truth about what we really value, mm -hmm. what we really care about. It's the stuff that we are fighting for, like intentionally or not. Right. Yeah, we've talked about this a lot. Like, what is what are you being reactive to and what are you being proactive to? Like, what are you drawn to as opposed to like, you know, what are you responding to? Like, Oh, you got this promotion or, you know, this job offer and that sort of thing. But um, you know, in the back of your mind, you know, like, Oh, that's actually not the road that I am going to be on forever. And so keeping that in mind, what, what is the thing that you want to get back to and what are the things that you're pushing um, for like on your own time? You know? Can we talk about that a little bit? Like yeah. you just create some bold choices. I mean, I've thought about this a lot lately about how many of the choices we make because we're like, we are driven for survival, right? Mm -hmm. And money is a big part of survival. Yeah. <laughs> and like knowing there's a steady stream of income mm -hmm. is going to drive so many of our choices. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think in many cases it's a necessity, mm -hmm. but you made some big choices recently to say no to steady stream income. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think it's, I think it's always like where you are in your life and like what kind of, what's important to you right now. Like what do you value um, at the moment? And again, like with your bio, it can always, it can change, you know, it can change like year to year or month to month. So, um, you know, and I talk to a lot of people who want to go freelance because I, you know, been a freelance writer for seven years and um, some people really like doing it. You know, they like having, um, they like crave uh, the change and uncertainty and they, they can find stability in that in a strange way. Um, and novelty, I think, uh, in creating something like as they go. And that's great. But then it's also great to like, have a, have a full-time job, you know, and uh, know where you're going every day and like build something uh, in a company that you're really passionate about. So I definitely don't think there's like one right way uh, for everyone. Um, and I ping ponged back and forth. Um, but I think it's all about like, 
what do you need right now? And so recently I was like, I just need more time and mental space and energy to work on my creative project. So like, can I do that uh, with a, um, you know, almost full-time job? Like not really, or I can't do it as quickly as I, as I want to. So um, that was sort of the, the impetus behind that choice. And but then, you know, you can shift in two months. I might be like, well, I don't need that time and space and creative energy anymore. So like I can go and do something else. Um, but I think just allowing yourself to like sit with it and be okay with the decision after you make it is important. Yeah. How is that working? This idea that like, I am, I'm going to make this decision. I don't have to, this doesn't have to be the decision forever. It's the decision for now. Yeah, I think. I think I'm pretty good. Like after the decision is made, like, you know, there's like, you're living in that new reality. My, like the part where I might get tripped up on is like making the decision and like the, the moment of, of, um, you know, that gray space in between that you might be in. Um, for me, that's always like sort of challenging. And then you have to go back to like, what are the pros and cons or talking it out with friends and what do you really need right now? So, um, you know, that can sort of be the, the, the sticking point. Yeah, let's dig into that a little more because I think you're probably right that that's the hardest part for most people is the, it's not the once the decision's made. Then we right. can say, okay, here I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At, but that there's two, there's two possibly fine or good or great options. Right. And you said, what do I value? Mm-hmm. Um, what are the pros and cons? Talk to friends. What else? Like, there was a long, I feel like a pretty long process. Yeah, I think, and sometimes, like, I think it just takes a while, you know? Like, some maybe some things you can, like, rip the Band-Aid off and just uh, uh, make, like, a sort of rash, not even rash decision, but, like, you know, you, you hit, like, the breaking point, and I think... Um, and that's fine too. Like sometimes it takes a while. I had someone email me the other day and she's like, I've been wanting to quit my job for a year and I've been debating about it and preparing for it too. I think you're like, you have to prepare for these things. And then she finally did it and feels great and is, you know, excited about the future. And it might be, you could say on one hand, well, did I just like waste a year, you know, thinking about it and all of that. But then you have to evaluate all of the things you gain in that time, which is like perspective and planning for this next step and knowing that it's right. Because, you know, you could have a whim and say like, okay, I had a bad week at work. Like I want to quit my job and you could quit and then be like, oh no, that was just a bad week. That wasn't, that wasn't like a, a life changing um, sort of moment that I should, that I should just like, you know, rip the bandaid off. Um, but instead you could sort of say like, okay, if I have multiple weeks in a row or multiple months in a row where something isn't working, then you can sort of use that to make a, a decision. Do you feel like that, that happens in your own life too? Like if this thing comes up again and again, you're like, okay, now I got to listen. I guess I better listen. Yeah. 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 It's part of the reason I like talking to smart people too is because like, it, kind of like you're saying, like if I keep bringing it up over and over again. Yes. Yeah. You're like, oh my God. <laughs> I don't even want to have this conversation again. So I guess I better do something about it. <laughs> like this is getting embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting too, though, because like when you talk about it, you talk about it in this like pretty pragmatic way. Like mm -hmm. it's logical what you're describing. Was it scary? <laughs> um, I think... It's scary. Yeah, I definitely think there's fear attached to a lot of these like big decisions. But I also think looking at past experience is always really helpful. So like when I first moved to New York and I worked at a job for two two months and I thought it was like, you know, the biggest break in the world. Um, and then the financial crisis happened in 2008 and I got laid off. And so I was like, okay, that was a big lesson because like I bounced back from that and I found something else. And then same thing happened like four or five years later, you know, like a huge change would happen. And then possibilities come up that you can even imagine that are, you know, maybe 
better than you could have thought or set you off on a new path. So I think looking to your past experience, like, okay, I weathered this before I have the ability to um, go through change and come out on the other side and, um, you know, just, just sort of looking at like your resilience, I think can be really helpful. I mean, it's not always easy to be like, okay, yeah, I did all those, all those things, but just, you know, repeating to yourself, um, yeah, like I've, I've done things, you've done things, like you've seen most things through and before, you know? Yeah. And I think too, like as we face those scary moments, that, that to me has been such a powerful thing is mm -hmm. to just start to inventory the things I've done that took strength. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because I, I mean, hard stuff is hard. <laughs> well, yeah. And like, it's scary. <laughs> but we've talked about this too. Like if you're always looking towards the future, you sort of forget all of the things that you've done in the past and all of the like, um, you know, resilient moments and the hard things. Like, do you have an actual way to inventory these things? Like, I want to know if there's like a, like should I be making a list or something? I do. I have a note in my phone. Oh, wow. Like a celebration of hard stuff I've done. That's amazing. So like anytime you do something, you know, so, some achievement like that, you just like file it away and then- Yeah. Like, yeah, wow. I'm going to add this to the proof points. Oh, I didn't know this. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's evidence though. It's, if we want like evidence backed, you know, sort of, um, it's again, like a very logical, emotional thing, right? Like sometimes I can't think of anything. Sometimes things just feel really hard and I want, I want logic and mm -hmm. I want defined points of truth to say, okay. I mean, I don't even know what hard stuff I'm going to experience in my life. Right. Really? <laughs> like, there's going to be all these things that happen in right. hopefully the rest of a long life. And I want to, I want to be prepared. Yeah, no. And it's a, it's a great thing to just sort of, I'm going to go create a note right now of like, you know, and a backlog of things that, that you can sort of draw from and be like, even specifically, like, how did I deal with that? You know, how, how did I, who did I turn to or, what are tools that I use? Because we can all like sort of adopt these like tools and practices. And I love like a hack, you know, or like some productivity metric and stuff. But, um, you know, if they fade after a while or you don't need it, then it can fall away. And then I just, you know, you can remember, oh yeah, I use that one tool or like, here's something I kept telling myself. Um, or here's a person that I turned to, you know, can I do that again in a new moment of um, uncertainty? Yeah, exactly. And maybe, yeah, maybe that will work again. Yeah, right. Because I think our tendency, right, as humans is to look back and say like, oh, well, the, like we look back on the things that didn't go well, mm -hmm. right? There's that tendency to, and you and I've talked so much about this, like how inactive we become through thinking too much. Mm -hmm. And that change just doesn't happen by thinking about things being different. Right. <laughs> like what did you do <laughs> right so right. much more productive and sometimes like it's you know it's really hard but then I think you're just always like gathering you can like gather information you can gather a lot of information you can like debate and practice and like you know I have maybe you know 30 books about writing like on my bookshelf back there but um when I was reading all those I wasn't necessarily writing but I was like preparing for a life where I was going to be doing that. So you can do all of that, but then I think that you hit some sort of like inflection point where you're basically like, I have to do something or, you know, I cannot, I cannot like keep going on this path. And I mean, you're great at like navigating change and that sort of thing. So like what, what sort of tools besides looking at like things you weathered in the past, like if someone's trying to make a decision, like what are, what are some tools that you would, you know, direct them to? I mean, it's interesting. As you said that, I think one of the things I probably do less consciously is a bit of a conversation around like, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah. Like, yeah. You've said that to me. Yeah. Like, okay. I'm not, I, I mean, I think even this, this decision we were talking about a minute ago with you where you were like, okay, I could go down this really like steady income road mm -hmm. and write less about the things I feel really called to write mm -hmm. or I could write more about those things 
and have my income be a little less uncertain and a little more fluid, mm -hmm. right? And it's, we, we kind of kept coming back to what's the worst thing that could happen? Right. Right? Like, there, there will be a way. <laughs> right, right. There will always, like, I think it's, it's um, thinking of a, like, life of abundance. Like, there will always be choices and options. And, like, it's certainly, it's not always easy to remember that. Um, if you sort of start to shrink and just sort of say, like, okay, but, you know, I backed myself into a corner or something like that. But but yeah, if you get really practical and you're just like, what's the worst that could happen? It's usually something you can live with or have a solution to, right? Um, yeah, it's good to remember. I need to, I need to write that one down. I mean, sometimes it's like, oh, what's the worst that could happen? This would be freaking awful. Sure. Right? Yeah. Or like, oh my gosh, I have to like move or give up my apartment or I mean, alienate my spouse like right. you know, like big things and then it's like okay I better really think about this thing but usually I think the things that have the big implications are the things we don't think about right right and the things that have potentially like no big deal implications we ponder mm -hmm. for months and years and decades right Right. And so, yeah, what's the worst that could happen? And then like living, like thinking, thinking that through, but then sort of making a decision. Actually, my friend, um, Tim Herrera, who runs like the Smarter Living section in the New York Times, like is full of great advice. Mm -hmm. He had a great piece about making mostly fine decisions. Yes. And so I know I thought that would speak. Yes. And as someone who could be like indecisive about certain things, it's just like, he's like, okay, if you have A and B, and you can't decide, it's probably because they're pretty equal. And so either one is gonna be a mostly fine decision. So you just pick one and then you go from there because all of the hours spent like debating, um, you know, aren't gonna get you, aren't, aren't really gonna get you any closer, you know, after a certain point. So I wish we could just like said, I have this timer that I use when I'm writing sometimes. And I feel like I should just, have one that's just like, okay, I'm gonna think about this for 60 minutes total, and then whatever big decision, and then once it goes off, like, I'm done. Um, Cause I just think like having some sort of like practical hardline rule, you know, uh, would be helpful sometimes. You know, yeah. otherwise like years, you know, years pass, years can always just kind of stream by. It's interesting too, cause it's like this idea that you can't really answer a question that isn't fully formed, right? Mm -hmm. Like so, you're talking about, I need these guardrails, I need these these lines. Mm -hmm. And then like, it's that whole idea of freedom within framework. Right, right. And then like, you give yourself the 60 minute framework. And then within that, you can be creative and you can stretch and you can flow because yeah. you know, it's just for 60 minutes. But right. I think that the same is true with how we look at our problems. We're like, I'm gonna solve this problem. Well, but that's linked into this problem. And, and then suddenly nothing's happening because where do you go with that? Right. So right. Say, All right. I'm going to be really tempted to think about this, 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 and this, but I'm going to focus on this. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, it's a, it's really interesting because it's, um, you know, like creativity within constraints is like something I try to talk about a lot. Like there's, you know, I know people who have written full novels in like a 30 minute, bursts like after work just like over the period of a year or something but it's just like once you give yourself that boundary you know when you're planning to do something and so that is the time allotted so if this is the time that you're allotting to like come up with an answer between like a and b or, or whatever you're sort of debating about um you know maybe that's just like a useful a useful way to look at it like when the clock hits 12, like you got to decide one way or another and it will be a mostly fine decision. Mostly fine. Yeah. Mostly fine. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I think even we both moved to New York from family homes and families a long way away. Mm -hmm. And I know for me personally, that was utterly terrifying, but luckily I like had booked the U-Haul. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I graduated and then moved home for like two weeks because you have to move out of the apartments and your lease is up. And then 
I was just like sitting there. I was like, either I buy the plane ticket to New York or I don't. And it just takes clicking a button. And so, but like it very easily could have gone the other way, you know? And so I think, you know, that, that's just, that's just what happened. Um, yeah, it's weird when you think about it like that. Uh, it's a big, big decision, just sort of. Um, because you booked a plane ticket. Because, you, yeah, because you just <laughs> decided. Um, yeah. But then that came after like a year or two of like thinking about it. So I could have booked the plane ticket like eight months before, but of course, you know, you're just like waiting and waiting. And then finally it's, you know, clock is ticking. Like, what are you, you going to do? So I think mine was a, a different scenario in that I mm. avoided thinking about it. And then finally I was like, oh, we have to move out of this apartment. Yeah. Guess I'll bu- rent a U-Haul. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then I got to New York with all my stuff in the back of a U-Haul after grad school. And it was like, huh? oh, my apartment's not ready. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't have a job. <laughs> but then you <laughs> figured it out. out. Yeah, yeah, I figured it out. And it, none of it has gone the way I expected. Hmm. Nothing was a plan. Right. But yeah. I just like, I, I got really lucky and I kept learning and I had some big moments of intention, right? Mm-hmm. Where I was like, all right, what really does matter most to me? Mm-hmm. That's I, an interesting like, like, um, like line though, because what is a plan? Cause I'm like, sometimes not very intentional about plans, but intentional about intention um, is something different. So, because I think a lot of people want to know, like, what is the, what is the plan? Like, what is the A to B to C? And because from life experience, we know that the plans usually sort of go awry no matter what, but then what's the difference between like planning and then setting an intention for you? Right. I mean, I think for me, like it is like, I, what if I think about plans, I'm like, all right, I have this grand life plan and I'm working right. toward, and I've always been sort of like, all right, I want to, I want to do what feels right, right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, yeah. and the older I've gotten, the more I've looked a little further. Right. Um, mm-hmm. But definitely in the beginning, it was just, well, I want a mentor. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not really sure what to do. So then when a mentor came, I was like, oh, you were the one I was looking for. <laughs> right, right. Right. And not, you know, I mean, you could go off and, you know, send 300 LinkedIn messages to people or something. And that's like a different sort of tactic. But then we've talked about this before and that like knowing what you're looking for. So then when it comes, you can recognize it. Um, Yeah. Which is, which has been like very interesting to see, like, you know, because are you recognizing it because you told yourself you were looking for it or does it come to you because you told yourself you were looking for it? So it doesn't matter. I've just, it's sort of like, how does it, how does it show up? But then, you know, it could have been there all along and you didn't realize it until you suddenly know, like, this is what I need right now. You know, that's kind of the way I feel about it in my life is it's like, I see it once Mm -hmm. I decide to, you know, it's like they always talk about like, you want a yellow truck, so then you start seeing yellow trucks everywhere. Right, right, right. I wanted a mentor. And so then when I saw a mentor, I was like, ah, and it ended up being the best possible thing. But I think also I made more of the moment mm-hmm. and the experience because I had asked for it and I had already acknowledged that it's what I really needed. So to me, that's just always where it begins is like having an honest conversation and for me, it's not usually with myself. It's usually with someone mm. about what it is I care about, what really matters. And then from there, letting everything else just sort of feel its way in. Um, mm. But we were talking this morning about this idea of, that I heard Oprah Winfrey say, mm-hmm. uh, about like betting on yourself. Yeah. And I'm just so struck by that being a bit different. To me, it takes all this idea of intention And it goes further. It says, like, I'm going to put my cards on the table. Mm -hmm. I'm going to actually say, like, yeah, I believe enough in what I'm here to do that I'm going to sacrifice some things. I'm going to actively make choices Mm -hmm. to make that real. 
Yeah, yeah, I came home and like immediately wrote that down because I was like, okay, I need to remember this one because, well, look at how many, in how many ways, shapes and forms we bet on like companies we work for and clients we have and, you know, our friendships and, uh, you know, just different investments that you have in, in other people. But what would that look like if you were just like, this is, this is how confident I am about what I'm doing, you know? And I think it just gives you that little extra boost, you know, to sort of say, yeah, this is, this is my bet. Like, it's not really a gamble so much. It's just like, I have enough faith that um, it's going to work out uh, and I'm going to keep, keep it up. Um, because it also just sounds like a process too. Like, cause you can continually do that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, today it might take shape in, in, you know, showing up for yourself uh, when you're, you know, writing or working on a project or going for a run or whatever it is, but just sort of saying like, okay, I'm putting this investment like back into myself. Um, it's just like a powerful statement, but also just like a succinct thing that you can come back to over and over again. You don't have to like constantly be like, what is the purpose of my life right now? But just sort of saying like, right now I'm like betting on myself. So what does that look like? Totally. I also like that you just added right now. Yeah. Again, it's like, this is no big freaking deal. This is not everything. It's not forever. It's not, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not yeah. my life choice. It's my right. day choice. Right. And it's maybe, you know, in that a, a month ago, everyone was like setting, you know, resolutions and intentions and goals and stuff, but um, having a sort of, you know, theme or, or like statement or something you can come back to. And again, like, you know, in six months from now, I'll be like, I don't remember that. I, I don't remember betting on myself. Like maybe, it, but it probably manifested itself in many different ways. But I think, um, you know, whatever like speaks to you right now, because we could have had that same conversation eight months ago and I, it might not have like registered in the same way, but you know, everyone knows like when you get that little moment um, that sort of sticks in your head. So, you know, it's there for a reason. So like scribble it down on a post-it. and It's also you know, possible we had this conversation eight months ago. <laughs> No, it's true. <laughs> and then, and for a week, it was like, yeah. yeah. And we forgot it and something else came up and we resonated with that, which I think is like this whole idea of like feeding ourselves, mm -hmm. right? Like you nourish me. Our conversations nourish me, right? It's yeah. like, you can't eat one salad and think you're going to have like all the nutrients your body needs forever. But like, what is the, what is the practice? Like, what yeah. is the actual routine? Yeah. Like you also, you know, you said- um, you know, this like creative project time right now is like you're training for a marathon. Like, and it's not every day is going to be uh, across the finish line sort of moment, but like you are putting that back in to yourself, you know, and then also proving to yourself that you can do it again and again and like show up over and over again. But I like that idea of like, this is a long-term, a long-term investment, you know, it's a long, long game play. And the other thing that I, when I said that to you earlier, I, I was thinking about is the fact that like you're putting in the hours, mm -hmm. right? To show yourself, like when you're training for a marathon, you can go on these long runs to build up your strength, to build up your endurance, but also mm -hmm. to prepare your mind for what it's like to spend mm -hmm. three hours running. <laughs> and when you're sitting down at your laptop in your apartment for eight hours straight writing, it's the same thing, right? Like mm -hmm. you're prepared for a series writing room now. Like you've mm -hmm. done the training. You've seen what it's like to sit for eight hours in front of a laptop right. and just right. run it. And so it's like, it's, it's practicing the doing. <laughs> yeah. And it's like demystifying the act itself. And so instead of saying, you know, oh, I really want to do this, or I'm, you know, I have this idea and I don't know where to start. Like, that's, that's all like really common. And I, I felt that a lot too. But then once you actually are in the practice of it, you can decide like, maybe I don't like this, you know, like I'm really into this these days. Like maybe I just don't want to do that. But I've been telling myself over and over again, like this is something I'm supposed to be doing. Um, and that's okay too. And just like forgiving yourself, just being like, all right, now I know. So now I can go find something else, but sort of realizing what it looks like in, uh, in the moment and in practice. And, you know, we know plenty of people like, you know, they could train for a marathon for four months and then just be like, I don't need to do that again. Like that was, that was fun, but like, 
I got, I got my fill. Like I know what that practice is like, and maybe that's not what I want to be um, doing. Maybe I want to go, you know, or maybe I want to take it next step further and go do it a ultra or something like that. But um, you know, having some evidence to like back up these like theories in your mind about like, I want X or I want Y is always really helpful. I love that. So let's see if we were to sum up the ground we've covered so far, <laughs> Kara. Um, let's see, I guess I would start with it's not, none of the choices we're making are forever. <laughs> we've got to assess the actual risk of the choice and be honest with ourselves about like, how big a deal is this? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What's the worst that could happen? What's the worst that could happen? We're taking a, we're making, taking bet. We're not, it's interesting, taking bets on ourselves versus making a bet on ourselves, sort of like a difference. Yeah, the semantics, I think I, I wrote down like I'm, I'm betting on myself. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whatever it is, I think I love this idea of just like going big on our dreams. Yeah. And being willing to like put a little into it. Mm -hmm. it. Um, yeah. Let's see, what else should we take away from this? So when we come back to this in eight months, we'll still remember. I know, we'll, we'll just replay it. <laughs> um, yeah, and also uh, getting a, getting uh, advice from turning to like your, your community or like your network and the people around you for um, advice or perspective in like the stories that you keep telling them or the way you want to be perceived and how you are perceived. I think that can always be um, really helpful too. I love it. You yeah. really are. You're like kale, just like <laughs> vitamin rich, <laughs> oh gosh. but like delicious kale. <laughs> okay. So I want like sauteed, like covered oh, in lots olive oil. Of garlic, lots of olive oil. Not that like really yeah, I don't want to be super healthy. Painful kale that hurts. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, um, I love spending time with you. I yeah, want to come back too. and like listen to this conversation all the time. When I, I know. Now we have it for posterity. This is great. This Thank is you fun. so much. Like the whole world got excited too. The dogs were barking. And the whole time I was like, you know what? This isn't about doing things perfectly. It's about doing things. Yeah. So. yeah. We were a prime example of that. So thank you for bringing me along for the ride. Thank you for being courageous and for being my friend. Oh, thanks. All the life lessons. Yeah, see you soon. See you soon. Bye.